This 2018 Chevy Tahoe's got about 55,000 miles on it. it. Belongs to my dear friend Jack who sells construction equipment. He's always on job sites. This truck is dirty and scratched up inside and out. So if you are looking for just an interior minor detailing, we have an awesome video for that. If you're looking for a thorough detail in a full understanding on how to take your daily driver and turn it from super gnarly back to as good as it can possibly get, this is the video for you. I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing a thorough vacuum. So I'm knocking all the deep dirt out of those cracks so I can vacuum it. And by banging on the seats, you get to open these creases and really get all the dirt out of them. Critical to get this, all the nooks and crannies cleaned out. All these creases hold a lot of dirt. So on the interior of this Tahoe, I like to start always in the driver's seat. Why? It's because I know where all the dirt is. There's a lot right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and give this guy a little blast off. Now, I don't recommend ever spraying your instrument cluster with a product, but I'm gonna go ahead and use our leather interior cleaner, which is a super thorough interior cleaning uh, formula. And what it's gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little spray, but I'm gonna make sure that I keep a towel behind it because I know that this needs a lot of love. So, so I wanna spray it. Then I'm gonna go and use our mini interior brush. Just go ahead and get all the gunk out of the stitching, okay? Out of the steering wheel controls. And especially the stitching on the leather, that tends to get really, really dirty. So I wanna be pretty thorough as I remove all of the dirt. A little bit more spray. And then I'm gonna come back over and just wipe it down. Wipe it completely clean. And look for a second round of dirt that I'm sure I'm gonna to have to hit. So your first effort is gonna be removing the majority, and then your subsequent maybe two efforts will be getting the rest of it done. So I can see now that, boy, that looks so much better. However, now I'm looking at the shifter. Of course, anything that you touch all the time is gonna stay really dirty. So once again, leather and interior cleaner on the microfiber utility towel. I'm gonna to go ahead and get this guy a little bit wet. I'm gonna go ahead and it's so dirty that I'm gonna use a scrub brush to get a little bit more aggressive with that cleaning and then come back once again and eliminate all of that dirt. Okay, what else is getting touched a lot? Well, apparently he's using turn signals. So Jack has a dirty turn signal lever. So we're gonna clean that. Okay, we are looking pretty good now. Um, the other thing to remember is when your steering wheel is sitting perfectly straight, it's gonna be like you're gonna clean it all. Remember that the bottom of it frequently gets parked with that side up and you're gonna to wanna to thoroughly clean all of those panels as well of the steering wheel. Okay, that looks so much better. Oh my gosh, already. Perfect, now I'm gonna go ahead and get into cleaning the dashboard. So as I, as I consider what it's gonna to take to get this entire cockpit looking great, once again, leather interior cleaner, microfiber utility towel, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start up here in the corner and work my way so that I'm always completely cleaning each part of the dashboard as I go across. I don't want to just kind of go like this and then maybe a little bit over here. I'm gonna thoroughly clean this entire section and then I'll move over to the next section and thoroughly clean it. Then getting through all of these little, all these little nooks and crannies, I want to make sure and be thorough. All right, I've got some great tricks for cleaning a really dirty, console, okay? So when you've got food and drink and nastiness all sort of all over your console, I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a thorough cleaning and then I'm gonna use our large interior brush. I'm gonna go ahead and brush all of the gook out of the cracks. All the dirt, I want all that stuff to come out of these cracks. And then the way I'm gonna remove this is pretty cool. You're gonna like it, it's a very cool trick and it works very well. Started doing this way back in the days of limousine detailing. So here we go, a little bit more on the drink holders. Always your drink holders are gonna be nasty, that's part of the deal. It's part of a drink holder's job, right, to be nasty. 
Well, this one's doing its job. It's nasty. Okay, so I'm just, I'm using the, the leather and interior cleaner along with our, our, our interior scrub brush. And I'm just going in nooks, crannies galore. And pop this guy open because there's a little more in there. On Jack's car, there's so much dirt in these nooks and crannies that we needed to get these soft bristles to go and flush into the nooks and crannies. A firm bristle brush won't do it, and a firm bristle brush could scratch. So you really wanna make sure you're using a soft bristle brush when you're going for interior cleaning of this serious magnitude. My gosh, Jack, what are you doing to this thing? There's some gook. There's some of this stuff that might require a bit more gnarly, firmer bristles, but for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'm gonna leave this, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. I see some more gook. More gook. Wow. Okay, so if I can't get the gook with the soft interior brush, I'm gonna go ahead and use the lug brush, okay? Because that's a little bit firmer bristles. Oh, that did it, perfect. So if I do need to get a little bit more scrubbing action in, like I do on this car, the lug brush, the lug and trim brush, is the one to go. Firmer bristles will get that, get that food and drink and stuff that's really embedded in there, it'll get it out of there. Now, if you've been using your lug brush on your wheels recently, and then you're gonna grab the nasty black wheel brush that's just done duty on your, on your nasty wheels, you might, wanna, you might wanna clean it really thoroughly or grab a fresh one. Yeah, the reason that I chose to use the, uh, the interior, uh, leather interior cleaner, is that it's way more serious of a formula. It really does pick up major amounts. You see all the dirt in here? I mean, there's so much dirt in this that I need our biggest, you know. When you're hammering little, little nails, you use a little hammer. When you're hammering big nails, you use a sledgehammer. As far as chemicals go, this is gonna be one of our more, more aggressive chemicals. In other words, this is the one that you use on the dirtiest stuff. Okay, this is the ones you use when your stuff is really in need of a pretty solid detail. Now I'm using this little brush on this little areas and then the, the larger areas, I'm gonna go ahead and hit with our cockpit brush because it's so much faster and easier to get all that knocked down. Now before I just wipe it all down, let me show you a trick. Using a wet dry vac or a shop vac type vac, I'm gonna go ahead and remove a lot of the water which is gonna come out of the nooks and crannies, bringing with it all the dirt that's stuck into those nooks and crannies. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a microfiber utility towel. All right, so we got almost all this. Now main console knocked down, it looks so clean. All the food stains are gone, the coffee stains are gone. And if we can keep it like this, at this point, once it looks like this and like this, then we can just use interior detailer to keep it like this. So you'll see the seats here have perforations and those little perforations have some stuff stuck in it. And when you get stuff stuck in your perforations, you need to use a little bit different method to get them out. And sometimes that method is keep trying stuff till you figure it out. We know that this lug and trim brush worked effectively in the back seat, which had something similar. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to clean thoroughly this seat, paying special attention to the, the gathered guck inside the perforations. You see I'm being rather liberal with my spraying here. You cannot use enough of this stuff on the interior of a car this dirty. You can keep on spraying. Spray, spray, and more spray. Okay, I'm gonna start with the lug and trim brush in these little cracks, and especially in these little, where we have these little tiny bits of some kind of goober in the seats. I wanna basically push those goobers down through the perforations and out. So. I'm hoping that this works as good in the front seat as it did in the back seat. Okay, then let's go ahead and jump into cockpit brush. So let's go ahead and spray the brush down a little bit. And here I go.
the soft bristles on this brush really do a great job of getting into all the little nooks and crannies. The bolsters, the far edges, those are gonna be always the dirtiest, okay? So, I got the bottom done. Now let's go ahead and get the seat back knocked out. And boy, there's some, there's some white stuff right here. After a thorough, thorough scrub with that brush, I'm gonna go ahead and now and take a microfiber utility towel and give it a solid, solid wipe down. To see if I got all the stuff. First of all, I'm gonna get all the dirt off. Second of all, did I get all the little things that were stuffed down into the perforations out? If not, I might have to hit it a second time. Oh man, look at the dirt that we pulled off of that. Boom, boom, that's just the base, not even the back. Man, that looks good. And take a look at those perforations where we, uh, where we went ahead and banged out some of them. There's about eight or 10 holes that were full of something that was reddish. Now, there are four holes of something reddish. Let's go ahead and hit that one more time. This time I'll focus a little bit more just on those, on that one area. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now I have three. <laughs> Well, definitely got the majority out. And you will see that we got those perforations way cleaned up. And that seat, how it's all one shine now. Before it was like glossy, unglossy, like the dashboard. We got the seats, we got the console. We're gonna go ahead and finish off the dash and the door panels. And then we're gonna come back and hit it with a little bit of leather conditioner. I'm gonna keep on keeping on with this leather and interior cleaner because it is doing a great job. You can see where I started to pull some of this high gloss stuff off of here. It looks so much better, just matte, natural. Well, when your, when your dash is glossy, for one, it collects a lot of dirt and stuff. Two, it shines up on your windshield, causing it to be hard to see out your, your front glass. So it's really a good thing to not have a high gloss dashboard. So we have done a rather fine job, if I don't say so myself, cleaning the interior of this SUV. Now, we got all the nasty, the makeup is off it, all the boogers and all the different things that were all over the steering wheel are gone. Now, we've got a pretty naked finish. So really, we need to nourish it once again. So we're gonna go ahead and use our leather conditioner to add nourishment to especially the leather, but we're gonna go ahead and do everything with it. We're gonna do the dashboard, we're gonna do all of the sort of the plastic, the vinyl, the leather, anything that's black, we're gonna go ahead and hit with our leather conditioner. Now, I like to use it with these little UFO applicators, and I wanna get it really thin rubbed into this applicator. That helps me get it to go on evenly and not put too much product down into the seams because you don't want that. So, so just to show you how nice this stuff looks, it's not a high gloss, it'll be glossy for a second until it dries, but otherwise, it really does a great job at one, adding SPF as a ton of SPF protection. Two, it nourishes and gives that moisture that this, all the leather and plastic and vinyl really could use. So it's, it's doing a couple of different things and it's doing it well. The other thing that's cool about it is you don't have a steering wheel in your hand that's gonna slip out of your hands, okay? It doesn't make it slippery, not at all. So here we go, getting the bottom of the steering wheel. Make sure I get all the way around where I know I will see it later once my steering wheel is, my wheel is turned. Awesome, look at that. That's such a nice matte OEM look right there. I love the way that finishes. You know, it's dry, it's not greasy. And then I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and do the dashboard and then I'll go ahead and jump onto the door panels and the seats and I'll have the entire rig done. Should take me about 20 to 25 minutes to do an entire SUV with leather conditioner. As I do the seats, it's really important that I rub the conditioner deep into the applicator before I go over to the perforated seats. You don't want solids down in your little perforations. If your car is parked outside a lot, condition your seats regularly. You don't want your seats to turn hard, to lose all their moisture, and, and, and become less supple. If you condition your seats every month on a car that stays outside day and night, your leather will stay nice. If your car stays in the garage in the nighttime, Outside in the daytime, 
you know, maybe every five, six weeks. You don't have to have leather interior to use leather conditioner. Because in fact, right here where it's vinyl, it, it is a great way to protect vinyl, leather, plastic, all that jazz. And without being too high gloss, it really leaves a nice finish. There's another product that I didn't mention, the Adams Interior Paste. Man, this interior protection paste is outstanding. Even more matte and even more protection. So another neat product for a, an interior like this. And if you don't have leather interior, after using our leather conditioner, your car's gonna smell a little bit like leather because that's the flavor of it. It's got a little tiny leather smell to it.